Life is created by choices added up over time. It's ridiculous what we are swimming in. Products being sold to us, the ultra processed food dominating children's diets. We're playing with stuff that we don't have to prove that it's safe. They're selling something to us. We're buying it. We are aggressively hurting ourselves. Profits and power have dominated over the health and safety and beauty of us as a species. But here's where I have ridiculous optimism. You know how many people I've met in my life that say, I had no idea I could feel this way. The only way you can experience something different is if you do something different. And there's a whole nother state of being that we get to go to if we're willing to take that step even when it's uncomfortable. Hello, beautiful beings. Welcome back to the Know Thyself podcast, where every single week we get the honor and privilege to sit down with a brilliant mind, a beautiful soul, uh, to see how we can learn more about ourselves and the true nature of the world um, at deeper and deeper levels. My guest today is, uh, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. He is a co-host of the Emmy award-winning Netflix docu-series Down to Earth with Zac Efron. He is, he's been a superfood hunter for almost 20 years. He is the host of his own podcast, The Darren Olin Show. And he's also a New York Times bestselling author for the well-known book, Super Life and the new book, Fatal Conveniences, which we're going to be diving into throughout this podcast. Uh, if you listen to the show, you tune in because you want to learn more about yourself, uh, become the most liberated, full expression version of you. And in modern society, that comes by virtue of not just what you do, you know, nutrition, good sleep, exercise, meditation, community and relationships, but also what you don't do. And um, we grow a lot through addition by subtraction. And so we're going to be diving into a lot of avenues today to gain awareness and realizing that applied knowledge is power. And uh, Darren Olin, who's my guest today, is going to be able to support us on that journey inwards. So, Darren, thank you for coming on the show, brother. Hey, man. Super stoked to be here with you. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's dive right in. This has been a little bit of a labor of love. I know you put a lot of time, energy, mm. and commitment into really exploring and communicating a lot of the ways in which the conveniences we have in modern society are detrimental and deleterious to our system. Yeah. Um, before we dive into all the nuance, uh, I just want to hear from you. How has your how has not your fear of death, but your love of life inspired you to go on this exploration for this book? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, I think the, the cornerstone of that was my dad, you know, being uh, suffering from this, uh, chemical sensitivities and things like that. And it was this invisible kind of, hard to put your finger on situation that was hurting him. So I would see that effect and that had an imprint on me in the in the 90s. And then when you realize that the bubble of was burst in terms of like you can go out and buy things that may or may not be healthy for you. And it was kind of a, a strange concept uh, 30 years ago to contemplate going, wait a minute, they can sell stuff that is uh, essentially you're breathing in, you're exposed to, you're touching on a day-to-day -day basis that are that is harmful. And so the, 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 the real innocence of this was, well, ultimately, I don't want people to suffer unnecessarily. And I saw my dad suffering unnecessarily. And um, why not you know, illuminate uh, that for others because um, I knew early on in life being three and a half pounds when I was born that I was fragile. My first imprint was like, you may die, right? And, uh, you know, living first three weeks of my life in a box in an incubator many, many degrees you can point to that is you could die just by that not being around your mom. So, so that kind of thing is, is very alarming to me when, 
you know, my first book being all around food and clean water and clean living and things like that. But this invisible, what I think an elephant in the room is all of the stuff that we're swimming in, you know, from electromagnetic fields to, you know, colognes and perfumes and, and everything to slathering on stuff to, to exist in this world. And, and so I just, I, I knew I kind of naively when I started writing this book, I'm like, I know a bit and let's just get some support with some researchers that I've been working with and I'll kick this thing out and, you know, maybe six months and wow, you know, it's like when you say yes to something and then I start really diving in and really reading and really maximizing time of focus, I was like, wow, this is this is more intense than I could possibly imagine in all of these areas. So every chapter is representing this kind of mountain of information that, you know, trying to kind of gather it, corral it all to then make it make sense for a normal person so that they could actually then potentially employ a different way of of looking at things. So yeah, I just I just knew that I had to poke at this bear that is is around because I I myself have been adopting this for the last 30 years. Um, and now I'm adopting even more <laughs> and because of also what I learned in the process of writing. So yeah, it was, it was, uh, it's based in love. It really is based in the love of, of, of us moving forward with eyes wide open, um, so that we can have actions that support our life instead of this almost ridiculous, um, scenario we find ourselves in and I'm, I'm not even trying to be dramatic this is it's ridiculous what we are swimming in uh, we can't see it maybe we smell it um, but these are products being sold to us sold to our our family sold to our children um, and then you could you know you can also poke poke at the the ultra processed food that's dominating children's diets and it's all the same weird playbook that 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 agency of others not taking responsibility over products that they're creating from my perspective and selling them to us like that's a contract they're selling something to us. We're buying it, right? You're exchanging something. And what you're exchanging is harmful, potentially undercutting. You know, this mystery, right? There's mysteries of disease and there's, there's people r walking around with headaches and low energy and bloating and, and mental health. Like this, this, you know, it's 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 just below the acute, you know, alarming nature of like I'm not suggesting that you're shampooing your hair uh, and it's killing you tomorrow, right? It's this is this is slowly underneath the way we're living unless we start to take action on really scrutinizing some of the things that we're doing and that's that's what i'm trying to employ people to do like i don't have all the answers i started it in that book that book is a start of this this world that seems to be continuing full of profit and probably a bit of power that may not have our best interests. so i just want people to have a little more sovereignty over what it is that they're doing yeah, it's <laughs> it's so needed. It's a true public service. It can kind of, you know, and just a, pre a preface for the listeners and viewers today that it can feel a little nauseating to 
you know, enumerate all of the ways that we're, yeah, we're swimming in just a soup of toxicity and it can feel pretty heavy, you know, it's thick, but it's, I believe that knowledge can be power and it's important to empower yourself with this awareness because of the ripples and cascade of effects it has on the choices you make in your life. And so it's better to know than just be in this unconscious kind of ignorant state um, and not knowing why you might have a disease show up or maybe somebody that you love or a pet or something that happens through them. So throughout this whole podcast, as we dive into a lot of the things that we've that have become convenient for us in our life and how it can be detrimental to our health, I want to provide the light side and the solutions and how we can actually create um, simple simple ways to uh, change our behavior in, in a positive manner for our life. So um, let's walk that balance and, and let's dive in. So in a clear, concise way, how do you describe what a fatal convenience is and why it's so important people become aware of it? Yeah, fatal conveniences are the things we're doing every day. The 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 actions we're taking that we don't perceive that they're harmful. Um, the products we're using, the deodorants, the shampoos, the conditioners, all of these things that we're continuing to use every day. So call that exposure that potentially, if you're not conscious of it, if I were to bet are actually underpinning uh, and, and potentially damaging your health over a period of time. Life is created by choices added up over time so you that can be positive right you can you know we did a little meditation before we start if you add that up over time that creates a lot of peace you can support that in chemistry biochemistry epidemiologic you can you can attribute that to acute balances of your body of parasympathetic you can get into all the science of it now we know that now so now these fatal conveniences are, yeah, man, they're convenient, right? This phone that we get to carry around with us and call anywhere in the world and, and find directions, any country we're in, it's ridiculous, amazing. I still have a phone. You still have a phone. But it's looking at things and setting your life up so that you don't overstress your body or cause issues and minimize some of that stress. I think of things as it's polluting and stressing your body. So let's minimize the pollution of your precious miracle ecosystem that you have as a body. And let's maximize beneficial things, right? Minimize stress, and, and increase. There's a lot of these fatal conveniences that absolutely don't have to. Like if you love perfumes and fragrances, okay, you know, maybe steer away from the carcinogenic endocrine disrupting ones and get an amazing rose essential oil, lavender. So now all of a sudden it goes from detrimental to pleomorphically beneficial meaning it has no limits on the benefit it can give you, right? So these things we can shift. So in using the phone again, instead of putting the phone up to my head, which is causing electromagnetic stress, challenging the RNA, DNA signaling, all of this stuff leading to gylomas and free radical damage and a lot of science that I cover in the book, which is crazy, Put it on speakerphone, get, you know, plug back in, use air tubes. So now I can still use this amazing device. Now I have less stress. So that was my longer version of a concise way of saying fatal <laughs> conveniences. I'm just saying like there's stress that's occurring that we've gotten used to. It doesn't have to occur. So what I'm suggesting lightly grabbing your shoulders and just giving you a little shake to then look at your life one at a time, not being overwhelmed by this stuff, but just one thing at a time going, okay, that makes sense. Maybe not put, you know, Teflon derivative of PFOS in my dent, you know, that's in dental floss in my mouth, right? Yeah. It slides between your teeth, okay, but also causing you potential kidney cancer 
that this PFAS has been linked to when it's exposure through the orifice of your mouth. So probably a bad idea. So, you know, bamboo, charcoal covered dental floss that's beneficial and maybe just wet it and it's easier to use as an example. So these are the things that I just want to adjust. This is a like a, it's a handbook yeah. for anyone to, like to be less overwhelmed. Yeah, maybe read the first few chapters, couple chapters to get the context and then just open it up and use it as a resource. Learn something, go to the back of the book. I've got tons of solutions and that's the way that people can kind of implement this stuff. So yeah, I mean, that's that's the goal. Just get people to not be living life under an unnecessary stress response. Yeah, I beautifully said, I just think of the, uh, the countless ways we're unconsciously undermining our own physiological well-being that we're not aware of <laughs> that add up to that bucket that we slowly drip in over time that builds to our state of being one day when even in 30s, 40s, 50s, depending on the level of toxicity that we expose ourselves to, leave us to a much less vibrant way of experiencing life. Totally. And so I love that there's these simple things that once you have awareness to in life that you can instead of it having being a physiological deficit, it can actually be additive to, towards your life simply by just buying a different product oh. um, or having the awareness or like buying different bed sheets. Once you do it and you have the awareness of these certain things, then it's like, okay, once it's done, it's done in a way. Totally. And so let's go through these different categories, get your mm -hmm. thoughts on some of these different things so that this podcast can be a resource for people to listen to, gain awareness on a lot of these things and, and make some headway. Yeah, amazing. All right. Uh, yeah. Personal care products is the oh, first one. Oh, man. Yeah. And, and this is with the understanding <laughs> that we could spend hours and hours and hours on one of these things alone. Totally. Yeah. There's, there, again, you, even in writing the book, I had to go, let's, what, what's the b base right. level of yeah. how many I, I talk about? You know, personal care. It's, you know, let's think of the bathroom first, right? Toothpaste. What kind of toothpaste are you putting in? Number one, the tubes of toothpaste are horrible for the environment. There's ways to not use that. There's incredible, it's not even meant to be a plug, but I give an examples for people. There's a great company called Bite. Yeah, it was like tablets. Yeah, it's like clean ingredients, throw it in, bite down, and all of a sudden now you have an agent of cleaning. So you don't have to shove this fluoride-induced, chemical-induced, which by the way, most toothpaste say do not swallow. It's impossible to not swallow. <laughs> so that's a bit of a challenging situation. So there's easy ways to flip that whole model. Hell, baking soda. If you really want to just put your, you know, wet your toothbrush, put it in baking soda and start brushing your teeth. Like these things are simple. If you want a little, get some essential oil, organic peppermint, put it in your mouth, great mouthwash. You know, it's like these kind of things. So you've got toothpaste, you've got lotion. So I think of things like the longer, so when people are thinking about this stuff, the longer continuous exposure of this stuff, so you're doing, you're brushing your teeth a couple times a day on average, right? You're putting on lotion. So I look at gifting things of lotion, like coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil, fantastic. Also has a natural SPF of in, in between three to five, right? So, so you have beautiful things instead of put, slathering on this, most of the lotions have endocrine disrupting compounds that permeate through the transdermal layers and eventually get to the blood, right? And then you have whatever flow agents they have, propylene glycols, potentially even formaldehydes like that stuff is not something you want on the large largest organ of your body so you can shift that stuff shea butter jojoba oil like these things are fantastic right um you know uh shampoos conditioners the big caveat here is is fragrances and these kind of things when they even if they're saying natural fragrances it just gets a little dicey because they don't have to disclose everything in there. And that's where carcinogenic activity of some of these flow agents and, and constituents in there, their trade secrets, it's a loophole. 
probably created by the by the industry. Um, so bathroom, you can really start to kind of, and then again, the dental floss, you know, shift, I uh, get it, that glide stuff is, slips right in between the teeth. Uh, but, but I now use just a nice organic uh, bamboo uh, string. I wet it and it's virtually the same, right? And think about it. They don't want it to break all the time. Well, sometimes it breaks. They're, they plasticize it, right? So now they're using plastics. So again, you're putting it in your freaking mouth. These things are just bad ideas, right? So personal care, um, scrutinize a bit. And then you get into beauty. You get into these, you know, lipsticks, mascara, concealer, all of these things. Now, these, this is a, I get it. These things are tricky. I have a lot of great solutions in here. But these things, whenever you see things that don't wipe off, uh, that are, you know, they don't smear, that usually is an indicator of PFAS, right? This pro per floral alkali substances that are heat resistant, that have a layer of protection. Um, but that is absolutely 100% a forever chemical gets into the blood and can cause everything from testicular cancer um, to uh, even high cholesterol. Like it's weird what these things start to do and then they bioaccumulate. So these are the things to, to start scrutinizing. So anyway, the, the, the personal care is a big one for sure. There's a lot to chew on there <laughs> with also just like looking at what has uh, perfume, right? Or fragrance yeah, in, in all the exactly, things. I think exactly. that was really an interesting indicator. And just being able to read labels, you yeah. know, and, and gain awareness. I personally, especially with cologne or perfume, like if somebody says strong cologne or oh. perfume, I can't be, I can't stand next to them. It's no, like no, so, no. It's, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it feels abusive, right? <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's so intense. And think about that person who's putting that on all the time every day and you're under you're absolutely undermining your health and when we talk about endocrine disrupting now we're talking about the master regulators of our entire body right the pituitary the thyroid the testes the ovaries this is the overestrogenetic effect of some of these endocrine disruptors the containers they 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 are using that permeate and come into these products especially around wrapping food and get into all yeah. that like food and plastics and and water bottles and all of these things so these are the things to containers are more than just trying to eliminate plastic we're trying to eliminate plastic but we're trying to also eliminate plastic that's in you that's getting in you on average 200 grams a year you're consuming in in the normal population that's crazy 200 grams and that's 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 a complete um petroleum based phthalate rich uh endocrine disrupting carcinogenic material that has become so ubiquitous within our population that we don't even really think about it Mm. right credit card a week of consuming plastic so you know these these are the and and the thing that was so obvious to me was every disruption of your ecosystem whether it's carcinogenic activity whether it's endocrine disrupting whether it's uh even a lot of these EDCs and these petroleums are connected to diabetes. Like there's all kinds of things that are being disrupted because it's the endocrine system, because it's the master organizers of our body, because it's the instructors of our body. They're being thwarted. This is the challenge, right? Mm -hmm. So again, you want to focus on trying to switch some of that stuff so that it can actually be gifting to your body and still be a sane person in this world, right? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it gets a little, I don't, 
I don't consider there was just a, another article on ice cubes on oh, airplanes. Yeah, airplanes, I saw right? that. It's like, oh my God, the amount of bacteria, not even to mention the the if it's unfiltered, right. you already are coming into it with um pesticides, herbicides, pharmace- pharmaceuticals that have been flushed down toilets. Because keep in mind, there's no away. Andre, there's yeah. there's no away. Nothing is away. Uh-huh. There's no recycling. Right. It doesn't go away. The thing is that that it always comes back. It comes back to you, and it af- starts affecting you. And it comes by way of our water and things like that. So these ice cubes, not to mention, have a, their own cacophony of chemicals that have not been filtered. Our filtering system in a community sense, does not account for chemicals that we've created. The sixty to 80,000 chemicals that are created, we do not have the mechanisms in our facilities of cleaning our water to, to clean that. We don't, we're not even testing, but you know, 10 to 10%, not even, not even 10% of those. So, <laughs> It's such a it's such a weird thing that I'm even having this conversation, right? It's a weird scenario. Like if an alien came down here, maybe it's going to happen soon. Uh, if an alien <laughs> more came and more likely. Yeah. By the day. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah, told directly by our government. A whole nother conversation, but uh if an alien came down here and said, "Okay, you guys are eating mostly ultra processed food you're swimming in chemicals that are undermining your health you're not taking care of yourself the U- us only has 2.7% of the population deemed healthy only 2.7% by the mayo clinic by the way you guys are trying to hurt yourself w- what's the other conclusion shouldn't it be the other way Shouldn't we have over 93% of our population fucking kicking ass and thriving? Shouldn't we be doing that? And then I push back at these organizations, the UN, having all of their goals. Well, you've failed since the inception. You haven't. We haven't. I've been all over the world. Why am I getting clean water to people throughout Africa and India? Why, why is it that these NGOs are desperately trying to get people uh, food, water? Why is our friend Spencer, why is he running around getting food to people? Why isn't that our initiative? You know, RFK, you know, his amazing speeches he's been giving. Like, what's going on? The undermining of our own health is is left to the side and then we're fighting wars that have nothing to do with us you know this this is part of the alarm of this book is we are aggressively flipped this whole model hurting ourselves you know we're one of only two countries that allow for pharmaceutical ads just look at that you know we've got new zealand and the us like, I don't know, I don't watch TV anymore, but every so often I'm on Hulu and all of a sudden it shows up on Hulu and I'm having pharmaceutical ads on my, I don't know, it's not free, but you know, these ads that show and like going, this is, this is, this is so weird. <laughs> it's very strange. Right? We live in very weird times. It's the opposite. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's like, like the opposite. I shouldn't be writing a book about this. Right. Our health leaders of this world are not talking about healthy food. They're not talking about breathing like you and I just did. They're not talking about vitamin D. They're not talking about the very thing that led us to life. But in fact, I have to spend two and a half years of my life, watch the detriment of my father and detriment of other people having to spend my time going, why am I talk about imposter? It's not imposter syndrome, but I'm like, it's a weird kind of scenario. Go, why the hell am I writing a book 
about I'm not the only person. Yeah. Well, we, you know, you can make <laughs> you can make a lot of money off sick people. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, and that's listen, it's the only conclusion I can make. The profits and power have dominated over the health and safety and beauty of us as a species. But here's where I have ridiculous optimism. You and I have in this conversation, the people listening to this conversation going, yeah, that's insane, right? We're, I'm having this conversation. They've already know on some level that some stuff they're using is not great. Now it's just kind of like in their face because we're illuminating something that is occurring that was occurring for my dad, that was occurring for me as I'm 30 years looking at this stuff. And the first researcher also told me 25 years ago, like there's gyloma research with cell phones in proximity to your brain. I'm like, what? And they can sell this phone and not tell you? Like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 gotta be both part just ignorance on a mass level of just not knowing what a lot of these things are doing, but then also malevolence on some level that a lot of these companies are, you know, from greenwashing on the lighter scale, but then to really, um, you know, potentially knowing that these are not going to be beneficial compounds and yet it's cheaper, it's more attractive, it'll increase the bottom line. And therefore the mythos of mankind that we're currently living with says it's okay to put the profit over the people and it's making the nation and the world sick. Yeah. So we have a lot to continue to dive into, but that was a great tangent just because I think it's, you know, I think a lot of people feel the ridiculousness of it. And I do both, I have a lot of optimism like you do as well for these conversations and the awareness and the light that's starting to grow on these things. Because um, when the people start um, voting with their dollar in different ways, then it kind of forces the top down changes to occur, right? I just, you just, you just created an idea for me. Please. <laughs> One of my favorite shows is ridiculousness. Uh -huh. Most people don't know that. Okay. Right? I'm outing myself. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. Because it's such a great, Rob Durdick, amazing, love him. <laughs> And uh, and ridiculousness for me, just a caveat is it's it's such a f like it allows me to laugh like so quickly yeah like right <laughs> and so I was actually contemplating like I always contemplate how to have this conversation especially you know I was in Spain doing a talk on this stuff and I'm like how can I walk that line of telling them shocking information and also inspiring them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a constant kind of yeah. struggle I have. Because I, again, I wish I wasn't here. I right. wish society wasn't here. Gotta try to share depressing information in a non-depressing way. <laughs> yeah, and then, and hopefully leave with the, the, the accent yeah. of like solution, power, yeah. choice, sovereignty, you'll be better for it, all that stuff. So the ridiculousness is, maybe I'll talk to Rob. So like, <laughs> have ridiculousness in a way of showing some of this stuff. Because I again, literally this morning, dude, I was thinking about how can I maybe through video show people walking through their life. You wake up, you go to your unfiltered water, you drink it, now all of a sudden that all of those chemicals are in your body. You're going to your shower. You're showering more of it on. So maybe just taking people through the alarming nature of this stuff quickly, concisely, but then take them on the journey of solution to illuminate the benefits of now what their body is doing as they implement these solutions. And I think you can do it in a in a kind of cartoon kind of, you know, those draw sketches, yeah. those things that you can kind of accelerate yourself through that. And that's that's what I want to get. The thing that I always think about being in the health field all my life is that there, there was a, a buddy of mine did a market research 20 years ago. If you survey most people in any de demographic, for the most part, on average, if you say, Hey man, are you happy? Most people will say, yeah, pretty happy. 
between seven and eight. We're so good as a human to adapt. And then we believe this is how I feel. Mm. This is who I am, right? And we anchor in that. Then you have someone, maybe they haven't eaten well uh, for a while, they haven't exercised. Then the overwhelming sense of unwellness that they have, now they're like, oh my God, I, I just, I got to do something. Like they hit that place. Then they go, they start eating better, they start exercising, and then a period of time happens. And then they start to experience a different state. Now that seven at eight, it's a completely new way. It's a new outlook. So once you've experienced something going, you know how many people I've met in my life that say, I had no idea I could feel this way. Mm. The only way they can feel that way is if they do something different, if they make another choice, if they exercise more, if they breathe, if they meditate, if they, they get out of that, almost the fatal convenience of habits, right? Yep. The habits are taking you towards your life of creation, opportunity, happiness, or it's taking you down this other path. The only way you can experience something different is if you do something different, right? That's the juggernaut. That's the whole thing. Because you can tell someone who's overweight and not feeling well, hey, man, just go exercise. You can say that all day long. Until they do it, same with addiction. I have a very good friend of mine who's struggling like crazy. I come from it. My dad died of alcoholism. There's nothing you can do except create some sort of sense of, I love you regardless, and they have to make the choice. And then when those people make the choice, you make another choice, get out of the perfumes, the fragrances, whatever, and then you have a different sense sense of well-being. But you only, you can listen to everything I say right now, everything you say right now. If you don't implement, you don't get a change. Yeah. You don't get to feel the difference. And that's that's the biggest thing. If people walk away going, okay, I'm overwhelmed, but I know that maybe if I not have ultra processed crazy food every day, maybe let's just try this meal and have something different. We just need people to take action in order for them to have a new set point. Because I guarantee them saying, hey, I feel okay from seven to eight, they're just used to their state of being. And there's a whole nother uh, state of being that we, that we get to go to if we're willing to take that step, even when it's uncomfortable, you know? And that's, that's ultimately underneath this whole thing. I, I don't have the magic sauce to that, but it's, I don't want people to wait so long that they're suffering unnecessarily. There's that saying that the best form of activism is attractivism. <laughs> to be able to be in the presence of somebody that is so vibrant, that is so healthy, that has clarity of mind, that is strong in their body, that is so inspiring, that it's an example that you can not just be in the avoidance of the negative states of life, but actually be in the adoration and pursuit of the positive experiences of life. Once you feel firsthand viscerally how good it can actually feel to be in a human body, you know, then it's like, not doing a lot of the things that are deleterious to your system won't even be a question. You know, you're just going to do them way less because you can, you feel how vibrant this life can be. And most people just sadly don't know. They haven't experienced that because right. from an early age, they've gotten this concatenate of, uh, of toxicity really that is supporting, um, that is not supporting them and feel feeling like truly vibrant within. And so I think that what we know is always within a larger context of what we don't know. And as we start to dive into some of these other topics here that can provide awareness for people to start making changes, 
then you can start to experience a new level of vibrancy in life. And once you actually taste that, then it's not like this discipline, willpower thing of me trying to like fight against myself every day. No, it becomes a natural buoyancy in which you live, right? Oh, and right. and so I'm fully on on the same train here with you. And uh, and so let's let's keep diving deeper into some of these things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it's full. Um, you know, you've got. You know, I think of I think of things as, you know, some some ways to take action. I think start with the most vulnerable um, from from go within to outward. Yeah. So what you're putting in your mouth. Yeah. Food and beverage. You know, food and beverage is a big big one. What your beverages are, what's in your beverage, what's your beverage come in. You know, all of these things are very, very important. Obviously, plastics, uh, we want to minimize. Those are uh, estrogen-mimicking compounds that that can have a very detrimental side. Now, the easiest thing that people can do, the best water clearly is a spring water that's tested and out in nature. And if we all had that, then we wouldn't be having this discussion, right? I was just in the Sahadu where we could actually, there was points in the, in the fresh water where you just open my mouth and, and drink the water, like the water I was swimming in. And they test for Girardia. And so far it's away from everything so much that it's clean. So we don't always have that option, clearly. Easy thing to do Everyone, 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 filter your water coming out of the tap. We know that the biggest exposure, even though PFAS is in many things, one of the busy, biggest exposures of a forever chemical is coming from the tap water. Not to mention astrazine, other pesticides, herbicides, pharmaceuticals, BPA, BPHs, all of that stuff. It's in your water, mm -hmm. you know? Do you also recommend with like shower filters and water filtering the water in your whole house as well. Exactly. I mean that those are bigger cash investments, yeah. but if you can do it, please do it because you are showering in that stuff. Easy things, a few dollars you can get a filter on your shower. So for sure do that. Get an RO system, reverse osmosis system, a couple hundred bucks, uh, and you can filter out your drinking water. Make sure to remineralize it, right? There's great, you know, uh, unrefined salt, add it a pinch per glass. There's an incredible company I'm super stoked about. I don't know if you know Mana, right? They've been popping up. Oh man, they they took like, you know, my superfood hunting hat when I see people finding the best ingredients and putting it in a product because I talk to the owners, deep sea minerals from clean sources the highest point in the uh, in the himalayas getting she legit mm -hmm. so this is a fun a fun ad but you don't have to get that exotic yeah. like i use it but pinch of himalayan salt amazing uh now you've remineralized clean water and of course get a good container a glass bottle uh i love um uh, blue bottle love you can get some cool etchings on it have your own personalized little amplified uh, structuring of your water uh, and now you've just eliminated tons of exposure to chemicals mm -hmm. very and now you've got you know i take a glass bottle with me around the world yeah. i always take one with like empty keep it in my carry-on and i'll get go so much as like you know what i saw first time ever I saw smart water in aluminum. Mm. Even though not a still big fan of aluminum, I think there's some potential uh, issues there. But for me, better than the plastic. So I'm like, hey, man, first time ever, I saw aluminum in the airport. So I bought those containers. And then I take it out of the container. I put it in mine, add my own minerals, structure it, shake it up. I just feel better. Even if I'm putting the good vibe into it, that's little things that I do um, are implemented and integrated. And that's what I want for people. You integrate those things. So water, water, water is so important. And then that same water is you're, you're washing your veggies, you're cooking with. Now, man, you've just changed your life. And that is an easy investment. 
And now you're the curator of your own fresh water. So, and then you certainly can go into beverages as well. Minimize your exposure to plastics whenever you can. Um, and if you can find glass containers, um, obviously sugary drinks and, f- you know, flavors, even natural flavors are a little tricky. Um, in my supplement formulation world, I really looked at this uh, and stared at it firsthand. There's still uh, flow agents that aren't so good for you, even in natural flavors. Um, doesn't mean that every natural flavor in every product is necessarily bad. You just need a little more information from those said companies. The companies that are doing that stuff, they usually are forthright with like, yes, we have natural flavors, but here's our um, concentrated version of water extracted flavor compounds, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the types of things to, to do. Also, ask questions. Ask other people, hey, what what do you think of this beverage? You know, in find your communities where you can get feedback from people. Um, so, and obviously, we've talked a little bit about it. Um, you know, I'm not an advocate of forcing people to do anything. I've been plant based for I don't know 17 years, so you know, I don't believe that we need concentrated minerals and and constituents in the flesh of another you know being and to kill it so you know i spent 20 years finding nutrient dense food so i haven't found uh, a reason ever to to kill an animal to eat it that said you know when you have people advocating for that meat as a superfood uh and then the normal person is buying conventional grown meat you have a really big problem because they're listening to these people. They're listening to these carnivore people and they can't afford, you know, organic tested organ meats from, you know, some New Zealand or yeah, yeah, some farmer somewhere. So 90, uh, what is it? 97% of all of the meat is conventionally grown. And now you're talking about pesticides, herbicides, growth hormone, antibiotic resistant bacteria, you are basically consuming because they have to, the ridiculous confined spaces. We don't need to get into that. Everyone can understand this is, it's a ridiculous model. It's insane that we're still doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just, it's just horrible. Yeah. The whole scenario. So, if there's a whole great book called Meatonomics, if you, and I'll, I'll, I'll summarize my kind of one of my points of that. If you want to eat meat, if you want to eat fish, I put resources in the book. Don't eat regular stuff. Don't eat conventional because it is filled full of toxic material that you don't want in your body. Spend, save your money, Spend a little extra if you feel you need it and don't eat it as much because you're, you're, the metonomics of it all will cost you more but will push you towards less exposure. And also, listen, from my perspective and from my colleagues, again, no, no minimize meat consumption, period, and you'll live longer. Mm-hmm. That's just, you know, ridiculously the science shows yeah so so uh so that said um make sure you're not consuming this this toxic uh food that 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 you know shouldn't be consumed anyway when you really start to dig underneath what is actually uh, in that stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. Like what, 80 or 90 plus percent of pharmaceuticals in the country are fed to animals and yeah. livestock. It's it's horrific to, to even see footage. Like um, I've also just been on the plant-based train for seven, seven plus years and I feel incredible on it. And I also don't feel the need for any animal products because of the, all of the things that come with it. And it's a conversation maybe for another time. I just had Simon Hill on a few days ago. We, do- we dove into a lot of that. So Love Simon. Um, super great. 
I there's so many things that I want to dive into in this podcast that I want to kind of take it into like a rapid fire of like yeah. I'm gonna say if I'm gonna say something, give it your quick riff. Let's hop on to the next thing so we can touch on a lot of these, and then towards the end we can dive into the you know deeper parts of certain things. Sounds good. Um, so quickly, since we're still on food and beverage. Fruit and vegetable, dirty dozen, organic, not organic. Quick thoughts there. Yeah, so dirty dozen, the exposure of of like say an apple, uh, lettuces, that kind of thing. If you can afford um, that, then you want to make sure you're washing your fruit and veg. You want to do it anyway. Easy little hack that you can clean your stuff with. Uh, Hydrogen peroxide, baking soda. I just soak all your veggies and all of that stuff. Easy fix. Um, obviously, if you can support, if you can buy organic, and better yet, know your farmer, local markets, and better yet, still grow food. It's the cheapest route anywhere. Even if you have a little bit of of land, um, that is the best approach ever. It's hilarious that right. Before I, I, the next one was EMF, right? So I'm asking you to be quick with that one. Take take the time that you need, but I, there's just so much that comes into, we spoke a little bit also with just, I think for anybody that's gone camping or has spent a night in the jungle away from noise pollution, light pollution, and electromagnetic radiation that we're constantly swimming in, uh, the quality of deep sleep that I've gotten when I've done that is uh, all the proof I need that the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth and all the things that we're constantly swimming in are not are not contributing to health. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, it's a, it's convenient. It's it's part of us now, you know. So, um, what are, in your opinion, the um, the most detrimental aspects of constantly being in these different electromagnetic fields? Um, and then the the most effective uh, solutions to things that we can uh, change that don't necessarily make it less convenient, but more. Yeah, I think I can rapid fire this pretty good. I mean, uh, think it, keep, keep in mind it's proximity and duration that's the problem. So when you have a phone next to you, the proximity and the length of time that that exposure, that is causing problems. And here's the major problems that, and, and I'm talking about Bluetooth, I'm talking about Wi-Fi, I'm talking about smart devices, and of, of course the phone, right? and gaming devices, right? So all of these things, what seems to be the the alarming science, I get into this, I cite all the science in it. <laughs> uh, Andrew Huberman and I had a great, uh, funny, not so funny conversation about it too. And he was like, yeah, uh, I'm never putting a phone, a phone on uh, that's on in my pocket again. So what we're finding out weirdly and this was a little shocking to me too, is almost like a chemical exposure from some of these endocrine disruptors. So it's contributing to lowering testosterone and motility of sperm, similar to like, uh, uh, you know, something in home or personal care, right? So very clearly in animal studies and even some human studies that are showing motility going down, contributing to lower motility. That's that's the basis of us moving forward as a species, right? Um, and it's also showing free radical damage. So the stress response on a cellular level is showing up. We are being stressed by this polarized electromagnetic radiation. Polarized is everything that we made. Non-polarized is similar to like the sun. The sun is non-polarized. It's coming down. But if think of it in terms of like if you polarized it, you take a magnifying glass and you then bring it down and it can burn things and cause damage. Clearly being overexposed in the sun can cause damage. Similar to this. So that's polarizing radiation that's causing stress. Also... The other alarming things is 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 the brain, right? So proximity of this what seems to be a RNA signal of the replication of cells. So the DNA sends is, and we're changing out cells all the time, right? So if you have proximity and duration and you're always having Bluetooth or, you know, Bluetooth is a little less because it's there's not as much radiation, but I still am not a big fan of bluetooth anything in your head 
but the phone is showing that potentially the proteins that are trying to rearrange themselves from the the instruction of the DNA through the RNA is being thwarted. So the 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 cell die, die off is being challenged with the senescence. So then that raises the carcinogenic activity. So there's several studies around gyloma, tumor response in the brain. Uh, there's several studies that show the the EMFs traveling all the way through the brain of the of a child. So this is the immune system is not uh, even close to what it is in adults. So children are super sensitive. And the other alarming thing around the brain is it's opening up the blood brain barrier and allowing proteins that aren't supposed to be in your brain going into your brain, causing all sort of inflammatory responses. We don't know the downstream effect because we're not doing the research. We're not doing the real studies. Even though the studies exist pointing to this stuff, who's going to sign up for those studies of, of taping a freaking phone <laughs> to your head and seeing if you get a tumor in a couple years, right. right? So this is, but we're showing it in uh, uh, stress response uh, in humans. We're showing, it's showing up in, in animal studies. Like this stuff, we need more studies. And the, 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 the scary thing is they know that this is detrimental. The telecommunication companies, mark my words, it's, they're using the playbook of the tobacco industry. Yes, it needs more studies. And then they don't do the studies and they kick the can down the road. This is a dangerous world, the Wi-Fi router. So what can people do? Plug back in. Do not put a cell phone up to your head anymore. Use the, you know, if you need to take a call, go to a quiet place and take a speaker phone or pl literally plug back in. Wi-Fi routers, Turn at, at the least, turn them off at night. Yeah, get like a timer that does it automatically. Yep. Easy, great, 10 bucks. Great company, tech wellness. There's all these little gadgets. Uh uh, August, the owner, she's amazing. She's de she was electrosensitive. There's about 17% of, of the world has electrosensitivity. Similar to my dad having chemical sensitivity, now there's literally the WHO is actually trying to classify this as a legit cause of, 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 of challenges for people. So it looks like about 17%. And that's just people who have identified it. I think we have a growing population of people just like you. You're an ever you're you're taking care of yourself, you're healthy and you realizing that you get away from this stuff, I sleep better, I don't have the same stress, I'm more calm because you're grounded in nature away from this polarized electromagnetic field. So these are some easy things to do. Turn off the Wi-Fi. Uh, from my perspective, don't use Bluetooth in your ears, plug back in, uh, and then just be aware of cell phone on in your pocket. And women, women, please don't put your cell phone in your sports bra or anything else. You're, you're causing a, a whole host of potential stressors. Um, and then I, I, you know, it freaks me out when people put their, they're having a conversation, they put their cell phone right next to their, you know, genitals. Yeah. And, and, and we know through that, through the studies that this is causing stress and lowering that motility. And we don't even know the rest of what it's doing. So use common sense. I still have my phone. It's off and it's over there, right? It's never on me. There's other, you know, there's great companies that are emerging, one called WaveGuard, creating uh, a science-based um, depolarizing toroidal field. Mm. Uh, this is incredible. They're doing tissue studies where they're sealing better healing. When you have this device, I can tell you about it more off yeah. air. These are great things, especially like in this room. And yeah, you're having a lot of yeah. electro... Active. Is it similar to like a Blue Shield or Soma Vedic? I have those. Yeah, yeah. Help it, kind of mitigate the negative effects. Of yeah, that. that's that's the idea. And this one is, for me, um, I was just more impressed with the amount of millions of dollars they put in the science of it. But yeah. that's, that's the idea. Yeah. And I've used all of them.
right? So that's, so we just want to use the best. And I, they also have a traveling one. I bring it with me on the planes and things like this. And also another thing to do is opt out of the TSA um, mm-hmm. millimeter wave. Um, it, 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 you, you can do that and you have every legal right. Guess what? I've never in my life and all of the many countries I've been, uh, I've never gone through one of those. Mm-hmm. I have always opted out. The easy so. solution also is like get TSA pre-check. You don't have to go through the exactly. big wave one, right? Just exactly. like the normal electrical one, which exactly. I think is fine. Exactly. That's huge. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. <laughs> Lots there. Uh, clothing. That's oh, yeah. a big one, you know? Yeah, yeah. So what are the certain fabrics and materials that are going to be what people want to say most away from and become most aware of the effects that they have? Yeah, so some of the some of the buzzwords you want to be aware of is when they say stain resistant, Yeah, uh, that usually means some sort of PFAS again. So here comes the PFAS. Keep in mind the PFAS is, a, is, a, is about 9,000 uh, different PFAS molecules, chemicals. Um, so... When you have stain resistant, uh, that's usually some sort of PFAS. Um, Water resistant, some sort of PFAS. Uh, And then in terms of material, when you have elastane or stretchy or nylon or all of that stuff, that is petroleum at its core. And then it's some sort of weave usually. Those are endocrine disruptors. And so think about yoga pants, right? Think about those kind of things. And people are in them, around their genitals, sweating, working out in. Now there is, I don't remember the company, but there's a couple companies working to make healthy versions of yoga pants and things like that. So um, best materials, uh, you know, these were made for me because I'm so into this. I I had to actually reach out to a good friend of mine, Jeff Garner has been a sustainable fashion designer for 20 years. Uh, and he's been telling people about staying away from all the, the dyes, formaldehydes, phthalates, all of that stuff is normal clothing. Can you speak into th- phthalates a little bit more as well? Yeah, so phthalates are plasticizers. They're what makes plastic malleable. And they're they're in everything. They actually show up in lotions, right? They show up in virtually all the clothing. Um, so these are absolute endocrine disrupting. And so they're ingested and they're 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 being um, taken in through the skin. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of clothes, there's azo dyes. These are uh, full of uh, heavy metals and off-gassing uh, of you know stains, dyes. Now keep in mind, there's 8,000 8, chemicals it takes to create a conventionally cotton shirt. That's bleach, that's that's pesticides, herbicides, that's sprayed, that's that's creating the cotton in the fields. That's also the detergents, the dyes, the stripping of it, the creating of it, and then the 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 um, uh, dyeing of it. All of that stuff. So it's just again, it's harmful to you in proximity of your skin. It's also harmful to the environment. So these things are, if they're harmful to you, they're always harmful to the environment. So so I think of solutions as pay a little extra, at least right now, for organic cottons, hemp's, uh, bamboo silks are great. This is all uh, wool. This is um, partial silk and then uh, 100% cotton, these kind of things. And, and then one fun thing that I now do is upcycle. So, f- you know, Go. I sometimes go on Etsy and find old clothes and find because usually they've off gassed. They're still in cycle, so might as well just use them. Um, and so there, there's ways to get stylish with this upcycling and then get less exposure to the petroleum based. <laughs> it's just so weird that we've we've dominated. You know the 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 creation of clothes 
with the highest um, pesticide laden crop in the world, right? And we've plasticized and, and used oil to have as our clothing. It is, again, it's just like, can you imagine I've been writing this book for two and a half years and I'm staring at this stuff and I knew about it. But when you're reading this stuff and you're looking at the research, you're going, what are we doing? Yeah. Why would we create clothes that are full of chemicals that are harmful and petroleum and wrap our bodies in them? Yeah. <laughs> we spoke to this a little bit earlier too, but you know, the f- uh, fashion industry being, you know, textiles industry being one of the biggest pollutants on the planet. Yeah. There's this one quote in your book I want to read. I thought, you know, it goes nicely here. So that we've been taught to think of the environment as something separate from ourselves as though the environment is out there in terrible danger, but we're in here safe and sound. To some people that may be a comforting thought, but it's not true. We're all a part of the environment, the same as every tree, lake, fish, and flower. We're just one more living thing with the same basic needs as every other creature. If something damages the planet, it damages each each of us as individuals. Yeah. You know, the such a, horrific example of that is the albatross Hmm. the the bird that can soar and glide better than any animal any bird on the planet and it lives in the farthest island of any of away from any other place of any other part of the world in the middle of the pacific and guess what it's full of plastic because those those mother and father albatrosses are out fishing and they see the shiny objects that usually are some sort of sardine or something like that and they go down and get it and then they come back hundreds of miles later and then feed that to their little children and the children end up dying because they're not filled of food many are filled full of plastic and that's the furthest place from anything in the world. There's no way. It is killing you, undermining you, and it's killing the environment. There are pictures you can find to show this where there's a, a dead carcass of an albatross. And then what lives beyond the broken down carcass is what was in its stomach and it's a handful of plastic and i don't want to be a bummer but what i'm wanting to get people to understand over and over again is that you're consuming things that are harmful for you by the very nature just like the quote by the very nature of that product or that consumption or whatever it is that you're doing your purchase of it is connected to how dangerous it is, not only for you, but to the environment at large. Because inevitably, you grab that water bottle, you drink it, you're being infused full of those uh, chemicals that are harmful to you acutely. You throw it away. It doesn't go away. And it eventually goes back into the ocean or buried in the ground, which is then now broken down into the ground, which is then now going back into the fresh water aquifer example. And now you're turning on your tap and you're drinking that again. That is the crazy loop that we are in. In every chemical that I virtually that I've described here, we already have done it several times. There was a study that I highlight in the book of teenage girls that over 96% of teenage girls, and this was a study a few years ago, that had DDT in it, in the blood. We banned it in 1972. That's how insane we are, Yeah. right? We're playing with stuff that we, we don't have to prove that it's safe. When I say we, the system is not 
needing to prove. They're not needing to prove that their EMFs are safe, that they're just throwing up and we're some weird experiment and, uh, and going back to, well, we're not doing a great job because only 2.7% of us are deemed healthy. So <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, uh, I just want people to freaking get that there is not an overarching person out there that is looking after you. You have to. And being the, being the agent of change for you and your family and your friends, be that. And, uh, and lessen the burden so that you can have the understanding and the experience of just, I'm okay to I'm extraordinary, to I am dialed, to I am excited, to I am the best ever, to I am, I have so much energy, I can't help but to give it back to the world, to share the love, to share my joy, to share what I want to contribute to the world. That is not going to happen if we're not healthy, man. You know, that can't happen. And so we need agents of freaking change that listen to this and go, he's right. I didn't know about a lot of this stuff, but he's right. More than ever, dude, you know, you know this. More than ever, we need people to, to put on our big boy boots and big little girl boots and, <laughs> and, and kick some ass and clean up this world. And uh, that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about people like yourself and about your listeners that 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 are tuning in, that that do want change, that do want sovereignty. And it happens in your home. This is your home. This is it. This is the avatar that we get to cruise around in this life and have an extraordinary life, not one that we just kind of, eh, I'm okay. This is just as good as it's going to be. No way. No way. Not on my watch. Hmm. Not, not, I want to live the best life ever. And that is a continuous. Am I ever there? No. But I want to find out. I want to keep going. I don't want people to suffer. I don't want people like my dad to suffer and then pick up a drink and then die of alcoholism because they're so bummed out that they got taken out of life because of this crazy shit that we're in <laughs> yeah <laughs> beautiful man I, I think that a lot of people can experience a big jump in health and vibrancy in their life with simple changes and i'm sure do you have an online resource for where a lot of these um solutions that you gave in the book towards the end is it also online if not people could just yeah i mean uh, we're putting a, a few more uh as we go um but the resources in the back of the book are solid yeah. um and it's a good point. Actually, I probably just throw the whole back of the book up online. Cool. Well, if you do, we'll link that in the description as well. But one of the last categories is household products, which yeah. is a is a huge category, and it's one of the things we have the biggest control over, right? Mm -hmm. We can choose what and what we don't put in our house. Um, so maybe we could start with laundry detergent because that's also another thing that screws the environment and that screws us again as well. <laughs> but uh, but also having these clothes on our skin you know, with the detergent that we use to clean them with is, is, uh, is important to pay attention to. Totally. And, and you know, the, the fragrances scream on this one, right? So they put, you know, the type of fragrances that try to overwhelm any odor of a, of a clothing. And so, man, I, 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 I left a t-shirt at a friend's house, um, where I work out at and, and they were, you know, wonderful to clean it. But I couldn't wear it afterwards because of the laundry. Did I felt abused by that? So the chemicals, it's, it's like that second kind of inoculation in not a good way. But these things are easy to change. So scrutinize your laundry detergent because that is that is something that will keep inoculating you in not a good way. But 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 certain things of like even uh, Castile soap and um, uh, baking soda. You can make some, there's some great DIYs I have, but there's also some great emerging companies that have lavender and like 
now or essential oil. And now again, we, we took something that was detrimental to you, but now we amped it up as actually beneficial to you. Another big one in the household is just all the things that have VOCs and that are off-gassing these, these you know, chemical compounds that we're not aware of because usually they're odorless and can't, you know, you, you don't really know what the impact that they're having on you fully. Um, and part of also like with the detergent is you just, uh, it, it's like the slow toxic buildup that you can make some changes that will just make, that'll provide you an easy solution with. Um, and, and so, yeah, what are some of the, the big changes in, um, that you can make with things in your house that have the VOCs and these or- volatile organic compounds that are just off-gassing constantly that kind of build up to this toxic bucket. <laughs> totally. It's a cumulative body burden that really is the big thing, right? So it's every day. You know, it, the, you know, look at your sheets. What are your sheets made of? You're sleeping. You spend a third of your life sleeping. Right. So what kind of sheets are you wrapping yourself in? A lot of these things show up and like, again, stain resistant, blah, blah, blah. Now that PFAS and all that stuff. So spend a little extra money on organic cotton, that kind of thing. Then if you want to go mattresses, all of that stuff. Also, the cleaning products, clearly cleaning products. It's a it's a scam a lamb. Right. So you don't have to, you know, organic white vinegar diluted with some of your make your own essential oils, put it in a nice container and boom, now you have a all purpose cleaner that costs you 20 cents. You know, these things are, again, you can uplift your home environment. Your home environment is your second skin, right? Um, Carpets, not a big fan. It's a big potential mold, bacteria, pathogenic, uh, impossible to clean. And then, you know, they, again, they put resistant to stain and odor. As soon as they do that, now it's a chemical soup that you don't want to be off gassing for your you know, your children or cl- cl- climbing around on it. Your pets are climbing around on it. Um, you know, couches, chairs, things like that. Uh, in California, I think less less in the UK, less in other places, but it's still you got to be careful of, of fire retardants that they're putting. It doesn't stop fire. Uh, the the history of that is ridiculous because it was from the the 60s and 70s when people used to smoke in bed. So it was supposed to to inhibit a cigarette from starting a couch on fire. So these are dangerous. There's even uh, fire retardants in televisions today for some weird ass reason, right? So even your television can potentially off gas VOCs, right? So these are weird weird things. Um, this is I, I, this is kind of like a comic joke. I'm like, wh- who's the agent of flame retardants? Because they're really good. Let's just throw some in televisions, <laughs> right? It's ridiculous. Flame retardants in 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 mattresses, uh, uh, chairs, uh, carpets, all of that stuff. So look, be scrutinized with that if you want. The GOT certification, right? Or the GOTS. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. That's an important one to look at. Exactly. Um, uh, healthy cosmetics, uh, uh, EWGs got a not, uh, environmental working groups got a lot of great resources and that stuff. There's a, a great woman that I learned later uh, has been on this train. I think it's uh, Mama Cation or Mama Vacation or whatever. She's she's great resource. Um, so yeah, find find resources. Ask. Uh, create little communities and ask what's working but Mm -hmm. clean up your second skin clean up your house and make it um uh beneficial rather than destructive open up the windows right whenever you can open up the windows for circulation Uh, obviously uh you can get uh air purifiers to circulate that uh if the you know if it's too cold out or whatever but you want to open up windows to get fresh air as much as possible bring plants inside Mm -hmm. um and and bottom line, get your ass outside more too. Mm-hmm. As you start to go on this journey of purifying your own system, the more you become sensitive to a lot of these things to where yeah. someone like you or myself might say, David, I can't stand next to somebody with cologne or perfume or like, 
when somebody washed my shirt with laundry detergent, could never wear it again because it's yeah. just like a crime and it's violence against me. Like people, <laughs> some people will be like, what the hell's wrong with these two? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the more that you actually become sensitive to these things, the more that you can actually feel the impact that it has on you. Um, and so people are on different you know, different scales of that sensitivity. Right. Uh, so, so I just think that's an important thing to note here. Well, it's a perfect example of what we talked about before. If you're just used to it, you're used to it. Your body's created this, this resistance to it. When you detox yourself from that exposure, you then go, oh, number one, I'm feeling better. And I didn't know I wasn't feeling good, right? right? And then, yes, you become sensitive to the toxicity. The body's amazing. If it knows it's being toxified, it does everything it can for you to continue in your life. For you and I, we now can identify toxicity. So now we stay away from it. But if you're a person that has been in that toxicity, if you were focused on it 24-7, you couldn't operate. The body's amazing in the sense that it's like, I'm in this toxicity, but I got to continue to move forward. So that's where the, the detoxification can, so that you can identify these pollutants that are in our, our environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ones that are on us and around us, obviously you got to be very careful which ones, but also probably most important is what has the possibility to get in our system. So cookware is a big one, right? Because we're cooking with our food with these things and yeah. these nonstick, you know, we talked about this idea of nonstick and our clothing and a lot of things that we're doing, but also in, in cookware that just, um, you know, in Teflon, I think most people are pretty aware that you want to buy cast iron or stainless steel ideally, but a lot of people also are not. <laughs> right. Or they've had a pan forever and it still has Teflon. Thank God they're starting to kind of get rid of that altogether. But but, you know, then you have, you know, tons of VOCs and the spray on pan stuff, right? So PAM and all of these things, right. uh, which are wildly toxic, right? Um, so you got to be careful with that. But, um, yeah, get rid of pans that that still have that material in it because it's it, it's going into your food. Yeah. And uh, that's that's uh, very detrimental. We spoke to greenwashing a little bit, you know, where you could have these dishwasher, dishwash soaps, and because it has puppies and butterflies on it, we think that it's healthy for us, yeah. right? And so, what are the big key things that you just look for? Is it simplicity in ingredients? Um, or do you just find the brands you know are good, and then you just stick with them? You know. I think it's all the above. I mean, if you're in a, you know, if you don't know, you definitely have to look at the ingredients. So look at some of the solutions I have, and then and then um, I would ask around. Uh, you know, find find different agencies. Certainly, the EWGs um, uh, and other agencies that are testing this stuff. But um, yeah, I think that you have to start with on the back of the packages. But that also doesn't reveal everything because so many loopholes around this stuff. So when you see the fragrances, right. uh, that is a that is a way that they do not have to disclose sometimes up to hundreds of chemicals crazy. that are just within the fragrance. Because it's a trade it. secret, right? The trade secrets, right? So and there's all kinds of flow agents, there's all kinds of concentrations of who knows what. Um you know, there there was a study of uh, in the carcinogenesis, which is a is a journal studying carcinogenic activity, and they found eighty five chemicals, industrial chemicals that are used from making products, uh, making um, uh, both industrial hard products as well as um, uh, personal care products. They identified 85 uh, chemicals. Of that, over 57 of those chemicals were known carcinogens, and they didn't have to disclose any of them. So that's what we're dealing with. Again, that I never voted on that. You never voted on that. They never told us, and they just have this one thing as as is a fragrance or a or a. Um, uh, or or, or a, a preservative or whatever, they're not disclosing that stuff. 
So, you know, Europe is a little better than, than us on that. Again, we're, we're kind of upside down here, here mm-hmm. in America. So we just need more information. We need people to scrutinize our products. And, and honestly, you know, it, it takes a little bit, but once you make that choice, then you don't have to worry about it again. It's just creating a better habit. We're all susceptible to these things we're speaking to, but in particular babies and also women because the amount of products they use yeah. are even more susceptible to building up that toxic payload. Big time. And and we know that, uh, you know, we used to, certainly when I grew up, there were like the doctors would say the placental barrier protected the child, right? So my mom was, she was drinking and smoking, I think, when I was uh you know, inner womb, because the doctors would say, well, it doesn't, the baby's always protected. That's not true. It's, it's alarmingly not true. 287 chemicals are showing up in the umbilical cord of, of ch- children being born today, right? 287 and well over a hundred are known carcinogens. So the baby's already being born. And, and we, now, we do know that that is also playing an epidemiological um, influence on the, the child. So the mom's being impacted acutely. The baby's not even born and being, who knows what kind of uh, DNA flips that that's turning on or turning off. And, and we're, we're, we're showing that the uh, what's her uh, Dr. Shanna Swan uh, wrote a book on end- endocrine disruptors called Countdown, and they're they're showing all kinds of um, activity that's not just happening now, but it's happening for our next generations. Mm. So again, we we there's so many there's so much indicators here that are showing that there's danger. But we're not holding these companies responsible for proving first that their products are healthy. We wait until there's overwhelming evidence of something already in the marketplace to show that there to, that that there's danger. That then they go in and take it off the market or they do tests. It's 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 a thing also called plausible deniability where the the companies hey man we never tested so we don't know if our product is is dangerous like, so backwards what crazy like this freaking twilight zone episode <laughs> all right so we covered a lot and uh, <laughs> there's an infinite amount of things to be covered my uh and, and kind of looking back and all the things we covered and some of the things we haven't, um, what do you feel like are the most applicable low-hanging fruit for people to change today in the realization that this is progress over perfection? Yep. It's impossible to completely eliminate you know, everything unless you want to just go back to the Stone Age maybe. Yep. Um, so you know, the biggest changes, a few things that are going to be simple for people, what you know, in terms of everything that we covered, what would you say would be the most uh, low hanging fruit? Well, like I talked about the water, water for sure. You yeah. Open up your mouth, water, beverage, food, yeah. right? Improve those things because that's, you know, this open orifice that you're opening up to the world. Be, be, be diligent about that. Um, and then kind of work your way out. What you're putting on your skin, the things you're doing consistently, um, kind of, you know, look at that. Um, what you're showering with, what you're putting on, all of those things, deodorant uh, especially um, because that can have aluminums, heavy metals, and that's directly connected, especially women, lymphatic and also breast tissue and carcinogenic activity. Um, Eliminate um, the fluorides. You've you've done that. If you got the water, you've eliminated that from your water. Eliminate that from your tooth, tooth, brush and toothpaste or toothpaste because again you're opening up your mouth um those kinds of things uh and then work your way out from there improve the the you know i would then go underwear right and i would improve your cleaning products again uh inoculate yourself with good stuff rather than the detrimental stuff and break your habits Mm -hmm. so that you can reinvent your habits for the good 
And I love to how we spoke a little bit earlier. There are things that you don't even have to change your habits. So just do a little bit of research and then swap them out. Yeah. When you find a natural plant derived, you know, eucalyptus bed sheet or linen or something, right? And you just buy that or buy a couple sets and then boom, you have it. Now you're not getting these off gas chemicals every night when you sleep a third of your life, totally. right? Um, once you find the healthy toothpaste that you like or the healthy underwear, that's just not gonna be bad for you, then then you're good. It's like those feel like the simplest, right? When you just you, totally. you just switch what you're purchasing. <laughs> totally, and it feels good. Yeah, It always feels good when you integrate, when you go, hey, you know, it always feels good when you, you take a positive step forward t- for your life you go, hey, man, it feels good to have this organic cotton underwear on, right? Which I do. Uh, you know, just like less of that stuff. It's It feels good to put natural uh, oils on my body. It feels good to put the essential rose oil on uh, as my essential oil of, 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 of choice or my lavender. It, it, you know, when you get to integrate that stuff, you know that it's starting to contribute to a, a better life rather than the undercut, mm. you know, division of whatever it is direction that that is going in. Yeah. You know, so agency over your life is is a powerful thing. As we start to wrap up and just feel into the possibility of one day a world that wasn't so to- toxic. Mm. What are some really inspiring solutions that you've been seeing companies do mm. um, as like not just healthy alternatives, but also things that um, are a win-win for the planet as well? I know a lot of people are making incredible innova- innovations with with fungi and mushrooms yeah, and yeah. so much. So I'm curious, you know, as you have been traveling the world, you know, on the Down to Earth show and your own personal history, you've been exposed to a lot of really cool ideas and people doing rad things. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. I mean... The the I know a, a buddy of mine right now who's in the process of buying two companies who are going to change out the PFAS for algae based and mm-hmm. and hit it on a big scale because he's already worked with Walmart, Pepsi, McDonald's, uh, ConAgra, like you know so at scale and he even told me yesterday I can't reveal the company yet because he's in the process of purchasing hundreds of million dollar contract but. Um, he said that through their material science, they will create fibers, natural fibers that will be cheaper than plastic. And that's been the big thing. Creating something as good, not only because plastic's good at its job, it you know, it's a seal, it seals, it keeps the barrier clean. So you can it keeps the barrier from liquids and foods and you yeah. can mal- it's malleable but he believes that it'd be cheaper than even plastic so when we hit that which is going to be happening it will revolutionize and everyone will switch also the waste annihilation is what we're working on so recycling doesn't work uh we failed miserably even if you recycled, you can't recycle it yet again. So it still exists in the world, right? So recycling doesn't work. We need to annihilate this in a clean way. And so we're uh, with some uh, good friend of mine, Chris Patton and his science team uh, and some massive investment. We're, we're looking at stadiums, NFL, NHL, NBA, and these guys are signing on to this technology of having clean energy sources to create a temperature and pressure gradient to take anything virtually, certainly all plastics, and break it down to inert carbon black, right? So no off-gassing. This is this is going to happen on in our lifetime. So we're creating 500 metric tons of new plastic every year. And now we're reaching uh, close to 10 billion metric tons of plastic that's still here. We need to get rid of it. And imagine getting rid of it and actually being able to use carbon. And also we're looking at graphene. You take it another step forward, graphene batteries. So now we're testing today graphene batteries that are a third less the weight and have three to four times the charge capability. So imagine if we replaced it, like say a Tesla car, you save the weight 
right? So you're eliminating a lot of the weight. And now with one charge, 300 miles goes to 2,000 miles on one charge. And imagine then there's no lithium, there's no cobalt, and it's carbon. It's not detrimental to the planet. And you get 20,000 charges based on that because it doesn't break down. It takes a lot longer, if at all. That's the world. And there's other regenerative practices. I can't name some of the biggest companies on the planet. Literally, a good friend of mine's working with them, and they are today moving towards regenerative agriculture. And so when these companies turn, it's going to change everything because they'll lead the way. There is incredible innovations happening. Mm. We are looking at new energy systems that are turning humidity that's ambient right here with us right now into power on demand. That exists today. I've seen it working. So imagine turning hydrogen that's here. Don't have to store it because it's here to use right now on demand. That's happening. There is so much incredible technology and people coming together that that's where hope comes in. So we change our personal habits and then we put attention towards the creativity instead of pulling around this chemistry stead of a body that's having a hard time surviving. We turn, we, we liberate the energy of some of the stuff that's pulling us down and then we move towards our tribe to create a new change. And that's what I'm seeing is happening. That's what I believe more than anything else. I believe the power of the human spirit, Hmm. the power of the human spirit coming together for innovation and creation against some of this darkness that's happening. You know, one candle in a dark room turns on the light in that room. And that's that's what I believe more than anything. So I want f- people reading this book, I want them to turn their light on. And I just want them to minimize exposure and stress in their body. It's very simple because I want them to kick some ass in their life. I don't want them to be, you know, my whole life has been get the greatest superfoods in the world, eat, eat rich plants full of everything, you know, that's that's beneficial. Now eliminate the stressors that that wasn't your fault that was put around you. So the biggest plan is so that you can contribute to the greatest life ever and you can contribute to a purpose that will blow you away, especially when we all come together because clearly, clearly we need a revolution of positive, powerful people taking action to to create the life that we truly want and that that's what's behind everything that i've i've done even this book mic drop (laughs) (laughs) so great and i think it's a beautiful note to start to wrap up here on because it's uh it's true man the more that people actually start to develop their own genius that comes as a byproduct of raising their own energy, which comes as a byproduct of eliminating these unnecessary stressors and finding true health and vibrancy, you get access to that innovative spirit and providing solutions to real problems that we're facing. And I believe in the human spirit, just like you do so strongly that we will create solutions. And it's just first a matter of raising awareness, which this book does so eloquently. So Thank you for a lot of the work that you're doing. This is uh, so exciting. What a time to be alive. (laughs) What a time. What a time. Oh, man. It's so good. And uh, I'm excited to continue to see the ways in which you're uh, you're sharing these innovations and, and stories. And uh, is there anything else that you want to share with our audience? I know today for everybody that's been listening, if you made it this far, thank you for making that investment into yourself. I know it's a slight deviation from the typical conversations or topic of discussion that we have on the show. Uh, but I, view, I believe that in the pursuit of purifying your mind, body, spirit of becoming a self-actualized human being, mm-hmm. it is just as much mind and spirit as it is body. And yeah. so it's, they all without, you know, that they will hold each other back if they don't find their true level of, of potential. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I try to integrate this as much as possible. So I'm working on a couple uh, new TV projects where I get to, uh, you know, illuminate and bring 
more solutions together to show people to to help people kind of give some attention to some of these things. So that's uh, I, I'm stoked about that. So we've got some cool new people that I'm working with, and uh, uh, and and I get to for my own well being. I bring in all of the knowledge, all of the people together to be able to work in concert with everything. In my mind, everything I'm doing is the same. Mm. You know, it just has different tentacles of of expression, but it's all working towards the same thing. And and that is to um, provide hope where maybe people don't see, and provide on ramps for solutions, um, bring people together that are wanting that same thing and uh and then learning and expanding along the way and and uh of course the actualization of our potential is hey man we're here let's let it rip <laughs> let's let it rip indeed beautiful thank you so much again for everybody that's been tuning in you can check out fatal conveniences um in the link in the description available on audiobook as well and anywhere you can find books uh is there anything else you want to point people towards Darren? yeah just i mean uh let's see what happens uh, <laughs> but yeah darren olean Dar- com and my name on all the social great uh and just look out we're just just getting going yeah Beautiful, man. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll have to have you back on. There's just, you're a wealth of knowledge and information and inspiration. And so uh, I'm excited for the conversation to continue. And uh, thank you, man. Thanks, brother. Thank you to everybody as well that's been tuning into this episode of the Know They Self podcast. Hopefully that this is a resource you can come back to, get some more information and inspiration from, and make these slight changes that have big ripples on your life, on your family's life, and ultimately the world at large. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Know Myself Podcast. And until next time, be well.